When facing a burning building, firefighters carry many things. Their helmet, boots, turnout coat, and pants weigh up to 80 pounds and can withstand temperatures of up to 600 degrees. They bring with them institutional experience and a tradition that stretches back generations. Yet the fires they face today are very different. Even though there are fewer fires, deaths from fire have remained the same. In the last 20 years that I've been firefighter, I've seen a whole big change in, in uh, the, the amount of fuels that we bring into homes. We didn't have this much plastic that we, that we brought into homes. We're doing all kinds of uh, insulation that is combustible and flammable. So what we see is that our fires tend to be a little quicker, a lot quicker in fact, uh, where in the old days, we, in my time I like to say, we used to be able to be inside a building and fight a fire for up to 17 minutes before things got kind of hairy, where now we're seeing fires go to flashover in as little as four minutes. To combat this trend, researchers at Iowa State University developed a simulation. They turned to the C6, a high-resolution, immersive environment to track physiological responses and decision-making in a lifelike fire scenario. Instead of a controller, the C6 incorporates natural body movements to help immerse the user. This system is called Position to Velocity. If the user steps in any direction, the environment moves towards them. If the user steps back to their origin, the environment slows down and stops. The virtual reality simulator provides several benefits. The first and most important is that we do not expose the firefighters to uh, the hazardous condition. Uh, the opportunity to go ahead and introduce decision tracing technology real time and look at the way firefighters uh, process information and make decision while they're engaged in firefighting is something that was never uh, uh, pursued before. Upon observing the scene, the firefighter should notice the charred, carbon-coated windows, the puffing smoke, and the red-hot doorknob. The fire is oxygen-starved and sealed airtight within the house. These are all signs of a backdraft situation. If the firefighter opens the door, he risks unleashing the explosive forces lying dormant in the house. Well, we all make decisions on a day-to-day -day basis, and most of these are, are pretty benign decisions. Um, but firefighters are a little bit different. This. They typically make decisions on a day-to-day -day basis that could impact people's lives, whether it's civilians or other firefighters. So the decision-making process for firefighters is of extreme importance for them to feel comfortable and to be able to knowingly make the correct decision. I like the simulator because it puts people in an environment uh, that allows them to make decisions of quick decisions. In fact, in one of the scenarios I went through, you, you had to either make a decision or get out because as you could see how quickly it was changing. Uh, the simulator puts things in real time and I think that, that decision making is probably one of the things that we lack the most in the fire service. The pressure of making life or death decisions can push firefighters to excel. Sometimes, however, it can cloud their minds and even result in a fatal mistake. When a firefighter goes to a fire scene, it's analogous to a football player playing in the Super Bowl. Uh, you know, if you're a coach, you want your players pumped up for the game. You want them to be ready to play, but if they're too jacked up to play, then the responses that they may have as a football player are inappropriate. In other words, they forget how to play. They don't think well. And so we're monitoring similar responses to a firefighter to see whether the physical responses are starting to color their decision-making responses in the virtual reality environment. The researchers use blood pressure and heart rate monitors to gather physiological data from the firefighter. They can compare this data to information taken from the decision matrix. The decision matrix that we designed for this scenario uh, in, entailed a lot of pre-work. Uh, we took firefighters with about 140 years worth of documented firefighting experience to review all the, the answers that we put in this. Firefighters typically gather information by asking questions. They get on the radio or they review the, the, the scene and the situation. Well, what we did is we took all that information that they can't get from the scene and we put that in a matrix so that if there's something that they want information on, they have to go to that information bin and then review that information. Researchers use the decision matrix to gather data on the amount, sequence, and frequency of information requested. This data is compared to the firefighter's physiological responses. The initial uh, analysis of the results we have demonstrated that being an experienced firefighters, 
not really immunized you from making poor uh, decisions. What we're working on now is taking the measurements of the physiological response and taking uh, the response of the decision matrix and adapt at the level of hazard of the conditions to this uh, level of stress. For each person, there is a different threshold for when stress negatively affects decision making. Researchers hope to improve high stress decision making by programming simulations that put firefighters at this threshold and help them overcome it. I dream of a day when I have a mobile simulator that I can take throughout the state. There are 18,000 firefighters in our state. Some go to calls every day, some go to five to ten calls a year. But fire doesn't really differentiate between how well trained you are. Things have changed and it's not good enough anymore to just teach fire skills. We've got to start teaching decision-making skills in fires. Iowa State University continues to refine their simulation in an effort to keep firefighters alive and well.